buongiorno. Questa mattina progetto metodologia. Due ore. Ok. Um, you know, when you uh, start thinking about project management, it's a notion. So, you have continents. If you like to work the Australian way, you go to Oceania. If you like the American way, you go to the America, America's North House. It's all, all, always different. There's so many possibilities. So, the, the, thing, the thing is, well, I'm, this is my opinion. I'm not a, 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 um, an expert in project management. I use the methods and I use the project management in order to, well, to manage projects according to the complexity. The more complex, the, mo the more um, powerful the system you will choose. If you want to build a building, a house, maybe you will need some good project management. Okay? If you want to visit Italy, uh, maybe just a paper and you write and you organize. First I visit Rome, then I have to buy my ticket. Should I need a visa? It's simple. So according to the difficulty, to the complexity, you choose a method. So in this session, we will have an idea at least how it works, how, how the, the, the project uh, is uh, organized, the steps. You don't want to build your house starting for the roof. Obviously, you will start with the, well, maybe sometimes first with the bank for the money, but you start from the bottom up, more or less. So it, it will be uh, one of our um, objectives to understand the structure of uh, project management. And I'm sure that a lot of you have a very good idea of how it works. So, as a um, first specific objective, buongiorno, uh, the key uh, units or the key steps, okay? First, second, etc. And you will, you will see how also it's connected, these steps. So this, this, this word is awful, interdependency. It means one step depends on the other steps. And sometimes there are two steps at the same time, how it works and how you should be careful to organize them much before starting the project. You have to imagine, actually, virtually, yeah, okay, I will do that in order to understand a bit how it works. And the work plan, basically, is the, um, the basis upon what you are going to do your project, okay? So it's kind of the, the, the skeleton, the backbone of the project, okay? And it's probably there that sometimes projects fail because the work plan is not well planned enough. And um, <clears throat> also when you're doing a project, when you're in the middle of the project, you, you don't really know where you are. So you have to be able to organize yourself also in, in the way that you know where you are according to the project and where to go to, a kind of um, compass, okay? So the monitoring is a very important tool to understand if you are, go if you are actually uh, reaching your objective or if you're not, if you're late or if you're ahead. Sometimes being ahead is not a good thing, it's because maybe you forgot something, okay? All right? 
Okay, uh, you know me a bit already, and you know that uh, I like to go beyond the subject. And uh, semantics, besides philosophy, religion, and things that I like to study, semantics is very important. We use words every day. Sometimes we don't really know where these words come from. Okay? And in this, in this first... Um, in this, uh, in this part, I would like to address the semantics, critical thinking, about the word cycle. Project, cycle, management. Why cycle? Well, if you go to the, you know, Google's, you, the usual suspects, to check the word, you have first a notion of time. Phase, era, aeon. Aeon is just a very strange word just to say period period age so cycle is re connected to a notion of time okay fair enough a notion of circularity okay hmm revolution orbit cycle all these are sy synonyms wheel loop etc. So there's a notion of circular movement. And a third, a notion of progress, okay? Go forward or go backward, but moving ahead or backward. Circuit, circuit is a bit linked with the, the loop also, but series, chain, succession, sequence, course, run, Okay, so you, you think about the three things when we addressing the project cycle management, okay? Time, circularity, progress. Let's have a look of, um, let's say, if you, if, you, if you Google PCM images, you will see a lot of things, very interesting things. Let's see some examples. The world goes round and round and round, okay? First example. This is a very simple one. Five steps. Where, where do you think it starts? Where is the start? Difficult to say, huh? It's round. So, do you start by the formulation? Or about the identification? Well, it's round, so it's difficult to... Well, here, here, here. Probably not here, because, well, implementation means execution. So should, and, and, and you see that? This is from the European Union. Well, another example, more sophisticated, but still round. But there is something new here compared to the other. For example, here, track. Um, forecast here. These are a bit different than the other, a bit more sophisticated. But it's still round. Another one, oh, this one is much more sophisticated. This one confused me. I have difficulty really to, well, okay, project start. At least it's, it's written here, okay? So here we understand that the execution, and here we understand more or less that it's the development. So what, what's the different difference between the development and the implementation? What's, what's this word generation? project starts, so it starts here, go here. Well, okay, you will understand very soon why I insist about the, the, this. This one is even more sophisticated. Okay? All right, so we had an idea of how you can't I don't know why it's not focused. Uh, better not touch it. 
um, an, idea, an idea of the, um, the concepts that you can find or in handbooks, in manuals and all that stuff, it's all round. Personally, I'm not a uh, very uh, fan of the round thing. You will see how I um, work and you will, have, uh, you will be able to compare with other uh, possibilities. Uh, also, you will see that um, the way I'm presenting to you this project cycle management is the way that um, European Union evaluators works. So you have to be careful because according to the framework you're working in, you will use a method or another, but the, the very uh, important thing is to understand the key concepts, the key path. Okay, it's like cooking. You know salt and pepper, you can use them so many ways. You have to adapt, okay? English have a different way of using sugar. Chinese, too, okay? Okay, the, the key path. This is, this is uh, something, let's say, a bit, uh, you know, two hours project cycle management is a supersonic. So it's, it's so complex. So I, I, I try to simplify a bit with the, the main things. Okay, obviously you will initiate somehow. You know, you will start, there is a start. Okay, you don't jump in the project, you start at some point. You have the planning. You didn't do anything yet. You're just thinking about what you're going to do. Okay? You have a good idea. You can put some very practical information on the paper or on the computer. You didn't do anything yet. You're checking, okay? You're checking prices, you're checking uh, uh, equipment, so you're looking at your staff availability to do the project, whatever. You're planning. At some point, you will start doing the project. This, this very uh, specific, uh, uh, um, I use a simple word, uh, uh, moment of the project management is a bit gray because are you starting the project when you actually executing or when you initiating you starting the project when you initiating definitely okay so it's the difference between initiating and executing is just the practical aspect of some t some kind okay but it's always a bit um, uh, uh, um, interconnected okay it's overlapped it's not this and this and the big gap here. No, it's always like this. <clears throat> After that, well, you have the monitoring. Sorry about the, forgot this one. Monitoring, everybody understands the monitoring. Monitoring is checking, is understanding uh, thanks to indicators where you are and what's going on, okay? Uh, an example of monitoring is the time sheets of your staff. You get the paper and say, okay, Manuele have been working on this, this, this yesterday. Okay, so this is done. You're monitoring. So the indicator here is the time sheet and what he's been doing. <clears throat> then you have the evaluating. Evaluating have two kinds of let's say, uh, context, your staff, maybe you could not very, uh, trust them very much because they want to give you good news, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, everything is all right. Go on. And then you have the external, okay? He's the guy, the guy from outside. His job is to, it's like Moody's agency, you know? <laughs> they tell you uh, what they think. Um, then you have a part which call uh, disseminating, exploiting, transferring. Well, these three words, concepts, are totally different. One thing is disseminating, one thing is exploiting, one other thing is transferring. But they're all part of the same, in my opinion, the same 
let's say, a group of activities. Okay? You start disseminating. Hey, guys, I have this project. I have this book. This is very good. You should use it. It's free. It's for you. Exploiting. Please get the book and, and do, do it. Okay? Make a course. Find people. Make it happen. And transfer it is, well, sometimes you say to people or to an organization, use it, do it, do a course, but they don't know how. So you go there and you help them to, to do it. So you transfer. <clears throat> Key tools. Even, uh, even on small projects, Whatever the, the project's complexity, you will have at some point to communicate with someone who is not there, like Marco here. Hey, Marco, we can talk. You want to something? I, I saw you for a moment, but he was waiting for me, so I had to introduce him into, in the speech. So, if, even if you have a very small um, um, task to do, you will have to communicate with someone who is not here. Either it's from a, a Skype conference or email. And you want to be clear. First of all, you want to know what you are going to talk about. I like to talk. I can talk about so many things. But when you're working on a project, you don't have time to chat. So even if you're uh, organizing, for example, um, OK, you have a project uh, go going on with a partner in um, Australia, and you want to understand if they already have the, um, the, the a manual ready. OK, you can Skype, and is, is the manual ready? Yeah. No, you want to know exactly what you're talking about. The manual have different steps, different sections, different. So even if it's just knowing what's the situation about, about the, the producing a manual of 10 pages, are you at page two? At least. OK, so the small, even small, you, you need to be clear and you need to organize yourself. So obviously, you, you don't need a big manual of you know, the Bible. And OK, uh, let's start talking. No, but you have to organize yourself an agenda. What is the result at the end of the conversation? What is the information you want to transmit to your boss, to your colleague, to whatever you have to? So you have to organize yourself, and you have to have a notion of quality. Notion of quality is following some standards. When it's very complex, you use big standards. When it's simple, you use an, a, 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 a system that you agreed with your partner. Okay, uh, if, if it's green, it's good. If it's red, it's not good. This is the standard. Green, red, everybody knows it in, in the world. <clears throat> so you need a bit of procedures and quality. This um, very technical world uh, or system of words, objectively, Verifiable indicators, OVI. This is from AEPA. You learn a lot of thing, things from this agency. This agency is European. Remember, always the context, Europe. And they have a lot of information about uh, key tools and project cycle management to, to help. Um, and somehow, you have also words like uh, key. <clears throat> you know, it's uh, you can you can do what you want, obviously. Key. Key performance indicators. 
key PI? Well, there are indicators. Obviously, if you have to use an indicator to know where you are, be sure that it's something that you can really use, obviously. Okay? If you want to know the weight of something, you will use, obviously, a system, such as the international system, kilos, grams, or the American confusing systems. You, you use something you can really rely on, okay? It's obvious. So, yeah, okay, you can call it key performance, OVI, but that's, you should know this kind of language. But there are so many um, <coughs> possibilities too. You definitely need a documentation tracking and searching system. Believe me, uh, you know, lately I've been invited in, in, in different uh, projects and just, just knowing how the people are working on communication, I, I, I panic and say, well, do you think we could uh, use a tracking system and to understand which Hey, Bruno, you're too complicated. Uh, what's, what's going on? It's just a project. Come on. It's the beginning of the, of the end. OK? You, you start. You will see that uh, when you work on projects, uh, European projects, since we use uh, forms that the agency wants you to use, OK? For example, the MS Word form. When you download it, it's called the uh, project definition, blah, blah, blah. So you call it, for example, go to Europe, well, doc. And you start designing the project. And you send it to your bodies, your partners. Buongiorno. They receive it. Five of them receive it. Five people receive this doc. Five people also da, 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 work. And all five of them send it back to you. Because you are the coordinator, you're coordinating. So you have five times the same document. Good luck. You need to know where the document is coming from, how it's, it, it's built, who did the job, blah, blah, blah. So obviously, when you send the document, you ask your partner to save the file with a different name. And there's two things you need to know in a, in a file name. You need to know the when, and you need to know the who. Because when you start the, the, the project or working on the form, two months later, you already have a lot of information in the, in the document. So maybe you would like to know, no, it's not actually maybe, are you sure you want to know, in which revision you are. And actually, you learn that. Um, in all the documentation you can find when you download the documentation from the uh, European uh, Union, you always have a version. You will see the document, blah, 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 the, name, the file name, and V something. So this is important. Well, I'm not going in deep the quality uh, procedures, but uh, while you're working, you have this system, and when it's over, you have this system. Okay? Working, working, version one. Working, working, two years after that, version two. For example, I'm sorry, I'm a bit supersonic, but just for you to have an idea, okay? Okay, you can use uh, software. Software is a technical word, but MS Excel is a software, and it's simple, and it's very useful, you can imagine. Just, I'm not a very good uh, expert user in Excel, but believe me, it helps a lot. Uh, and you have 
obviously a lot of uh, kind of uh, softwares you can find co according to the complexity of the, the, the project you're working on. So uh, software is uh, you put data, okay? You put the information and it helps you to understand if you're, okay, there is this alarm things and they, they will, if you put, for example, data that you say, okay, my, my book is ready in two months. And obviously, if you uh, put uh, an information three months later, oh, the book is ready, you know, hey, you one month late. That's the software. Um, we'll have a, a short idea. I will, I will show you very quickly some example of uh, used um, methods such as uh, PERT, PMI. The, the L LFA is the logical framework approach. This one I will develop a little bit more because this is a big trend and a big <coughs> a policy, let's say, in Europe. Okay? Um, the, they, ha they have programs with much more complex uh, project uh, grants, such as uh, uh, FP7 or Europaid and or Daphne. Daphne, for example, are programs to tackle the situation of human rights. Well, in, in, I'm not sure about that, but at some point they, they, they tell you, you use the LFA. You have to, it's mandatory. Because it's a system that they use. I'm not sure about that, but you have the critical path, agile um, system methods, etc. Okay, now <clears throat> let's, uh, let's see um, a bit more in-depth analysis. When, when you're initiating, basically you, you look at uh, uh, something that makes, okay, there's, there's something here that makes something bad happen and makes, have an effect, an impact on the population. Okay? The water is not very uh, healthy. It's not treated. Diseases, people die. Well, okay. People have uh, problems with uh, health. They don't obviously die. So that's why what you see. What you want it's the contrary, okay? You set the objectives, you build the project, you have the results. The result basically is to stop the cause. That's basically the uh, logic. You have different way to address that. So, when you initiate, initiate your, your project idea, you will have a big bunch of time of analysis to check the situation, what's going on. Okay, you can, you can say, okay, there is no employment in Bari. It's difficult to find a job in Bari. You need to find solutions for that. So, just saying that is not enough. You have to go deeper and understand why and, and what's going on. So after that, you have also the criteria, the priorities, the trends, what's going on. Uh, uh, okay, maybe uh, they, stop, they stop manufacturing products in Bari, so jobs are getting... You know, the, 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 the secondary sector is, is really uh, diminishing. So. All the people who knew how to weld, how to sew, how to do a, a lot of uh, vocational things, they can't find a job, they have to move out. So you have the criteria. Um, at this point, uh, maybe you also try to figure out about funding. Because, well, maybe uh, you will need some extra help. Either it's a private equity, private equity, 
private equity, everybody. It's, it's uh, companies that let you money, business angels. They let you money and they, they want their money back with profit. Sharks. Um, so you have, you have this situation. And um, when, when you're here, you can also start, according to the complexity of the project, a problem tree uh, analysis. It's, it, it's basically, we don't have time to go deeper, but it's okay, you start with the cause and you tr try to understand at each level, at cause, uh, until you get to the uh, effect, what's, what's really uh, the information you can get, okay? You have the cause, you go to the, the effect, just to, and at, 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 this, at this level, maybe you have just one, one route, but then you have different situation at this, this level, and different situation at, at this effect. You, you can have, for example, three or four or more effects, or more issues from the same cause, okay? So it's a, a tree at the end. This problem tree analysis is some, some important aspect of the project management. But it's, it's a, a, a one approach, there's, there's many others. <clears throat> um, uh, I would like to give you maybe some example of um, when you, when you are uh, at the situation analysis. Um, you have, for example, the, um, the stakeholders. The stake stakeholders means the, the organizations and the people that are related to the, the, the cause, to the, the problem. Okay, uh, employment. You have the government, you have the companies, you have the uh, trade union, trade union, you know, the, the, the guys that uh, defend the workers. You have the chambers of commerce, chambers of craft. All these this organizations are linked to this problem. So these, these, these organizations are what we call the stakeholders, the guys that hold part of the problem. Okay, so when you anal analyze the situation, actually you should use the two ways, the multi-stakeholders analysis and the single stakeholders, okay? Okay, for example, um, students have low grades. They don't have good grades, okay, to narrow a bit. So if you look at the single stakeholders, it means that you are going to analyze the situation only on the, on the organization and people related to education. Single stakeholder. Now, if you, you think that uh, the students have low grades because, let's say, um, they don't have uh, good fac facilities, the, the, the building is not very good, they don't want to go to school because it's really ruined. So you open it and you go to the government. The government is not doing his job. He should have installations like this. This is beautiful, okay? So then you open, you go to another stakeholders. So you have two stakeholders, the government and the education system. Multi-stakeholders, okay? You see the, the point, okay? This is, these are words you will, you will read and, and, and hear in a lot of uh, documentation on the, the European Union um, system. So, um, also, when you look at the uh, objectives, when you analyze, uh, analyze your situations, you want to uh, analyze the cultural context, the social context. Okay, this is part of the analysis, in the broad analysis of the situation. You want also, in this analysis, to understand uh, better the target group you're talking about. When you find a, a need, a problem, which target group are you talking about, okay? And you want to, to be very clear about who you're talking about, okay? Women is not a specific word enough, men n n either. Um, long-term unemployed people 
adult people. This is more specific. Long-term unemployed people in the agricultural sector, even better. Okay? So the, the stakeholders, the objectives, exactly what you're going to, um, to work on, the target group, these are the, 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 the analysis, you, you, the, the factors you have to consider in the analysis, okay? So back to the sequence of this um, part, initiating. You want to do a state-of-the-art survey. It means that you have to gather information, as many information as possible, on the subject on the situation, what have been done before, what's going on, is there any organization working in the same field, etc., etc., etc. What are the good practices, okay? In order to understand if, if what you're thinking is something new, is something important, and all that stuff. So, state-of-the-art survey. Um, also, when you're starting your project, you will have to think about people, organization to help you. So you have also in this initiating phase, the partner search. The partner search, we don't have, uh, we will see that a bit better in other sections of uh, sessions of this uh, event. Come on, it's crucial. Who are you going to work with? Uh, why are you going to work with these guys? What's the rationale? Okay? And you will see that when you um, uh, start uh, building a project with the forms, you will have to justify why you're working with this partner and not the other one or another one. This is crucial. You will see a lot of uh, uh, key uh, notion on that, such as, for example, the complementarity. You know, the, a partnership is like a puzzle. All the partners have different skills, and then different skills mean different responsibility in the project. Obviously, you can have a, pro uh, a partner that have uh, at least two or three competencies, skills, the same as you. But at least one is important and you don't have it, so you need him. You understand? This is so important, you can imagine. The risk analysis, this, uh, you know, risk analysis uh, today makes a lot of money. Because you, don't, you can't imagine how many uh, companies need to be sure that what they are doing is going to get profitable. So uh, if you're looking for a trend, an employment uh, trend, Think about risk analysis. It's a big world. There will need a lot of people. Uh, well, unfortunately, it's, all, it's about numbers. <laughs> so uh, it's a bit um, difficult to, um, to like when you don't like mathematics because it's all probabilities, you know, etc. So all, all these steps, there are some, some other steps, gives you the rational. The rational, this word rational, is a key word, not to say the key word in the European uh, system, it means the, 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 the deep root of the why you're doing this. Okay? It's the reason. It's the quintessence. It's really the most important. Without this very clear and very organized and very well written it's confusing for the evaluator. You will learn how to, in one sentence, explain all this. One sentence. Okay? Let's say uh, you will see also that uh, on the documents you have limited characters. So I will st st at some point I will start talking about quantity of characters to, for you to, to get acquainted familiar with the word, with the, the system. So for example, here, the rationale in 200, 300 characters you should be able to explain in one sentence. Okay, um, something else? 
Yeah, uh, let me add uh, two more things. I've been working this mor morning. <laughs> Uh, there's also an important thing at this point, which is, I'm going to put this in red. Also at this stage, you should uh, address, uh, when I say address, you should uh, think about the situation of sustainability. Whatever you want to do, you want it to be a long-term thing. Even after the project is finished and you are not doing the project anymore, but people are using your project. You want to address this thing. This is very important. And you, can, you, you should think about it at this point. I think I'm, I'm using a... Uh, interesting image in a moment. So uh, sustainability means what? In this context, it means something that will last for a long time and will not lose too much of its uh, core content. Okay? For example, uh, if I design a manual to teach people uh, how to uh, build houses in wood. Maybe it's not very sustainable because there are not many people uh, buying houses or building houses in wood. So it will work sometimes, maybe in the northern uh, Europe, Europe, but this is not really sustainable. Now, if I create a manual on how to build, build houses with recycled material. Ah, and that's interesting because recycling is going to last forever. At any point in our life, we'll have to recycle material. This is sustainable. You see uh, the difference? This is just an image. There are many ways of uh, looking at it. And sustainable in other parts of other uh, systems are linked to the balance between social, economics, and environment okay this notion of sustain, st sustainability you should know very well okay and know the people involved and all that stuff okay um, planning programming this is the second let's say major step at this point you will have already some kind of a draft uh, uh, a first image of your project after the initiation okay you have kind of a project chart okay you know more or less the the, the form is it a square is it a round is it a triangle you have the, the idea so uh, you have the project description and in this project description this is a I think it's the worst slide I, I did the worst because you're going to your eyes are going to you have the aim the operational objectives during during the, the 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 working with the form we will address more specifically all this this parts for you to to see the difference between aim and operational objectives uh, the target group and the impact on the target group you'll have the outcomes the outcomes I'm using this word because this is the word you will read and listen to all the time in this project it's the result an outcome is a book an outcome is a set of things for a training course an outcome is something tangible practical that is the end of the, 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 the works or the project a video a movie okay something you can really uh, touch or see or hear an outcome can be an event this is an outcome this w week people have been working a lot and they, the result is there the strategy how are you going to do things okay now at this point I have to 
you, you have to know exactly how this is going to work in a sustainable way. At this point, planning programming, you, the result of this, this step is to know exactly what's going to happen or what's planned to happen. Okay? So you spend some time at this stage. Better think an hour for a one minute action. In this part also you will have the work plans. All these uh, strange words, <laughs> WP is for work package, okay? These are imp important things, okay? Work packages. Uh, the DVs, that's called a deliverable. ATs, anticipated or planned tasks. Okay, an example of a work package is, for example, the management of the project, the whole management. This is the work package. What are the deliverables? What, what's, it's, what's the meaning of deliverables? Deliverables are things, concrete, tangible, that are going to be produced by the work package management, such as reports, such as manual of procedures, the how-tos, such as meetings. Meeting, a meeting is a deliverable because a meeting gives you minutes, information. Okay? Don't worry because if you're sometimes, uh, first of all, you ask a question. Thank you. And uh, also, we will go deeper when, you go, when we start working on the documents and working with activities. You will have a better uh, practical approach of what's all this. Yeah, many other words to explain that, but WPs, DVs, and IT80s are more or less. But the, the work plan is basically your, um, hmm? your list of actions. And this is, this is part, part G of, of the, the Word document. Well, actually, you will hear me saying, this is important, this is important, all is important, obviously, but part G is quite crucial. This is the muscle, this is what makes your project trustable. The partnership structure. Well, uh, I don't know if you were familiar with the SWOT. Uh, yes? No? Yeah. SWOT. Uh, strengths, weakness, uh, <laughs> I have a white thing here. Can someone help me? Yeah, that's the O. Threats. The things that can happen that uh, may do something harmful to your project. Well, uh, obviously you, you are not going to SWAT your partner, you know, uh, hey, prove me uh, that you have the skills and all that stuff, but you should ask your partner to self-assess. You know, it's difficult to know, uh, when, when, I, when I was invited uh, to the preparatory visit to Synergia in uh, Bitonto, I was very happy to go to Italy. But I went to the website. Who was these guys? Oh, it's organized, they do this and they do that. I think it's Italian, but uh, not English yet. But Google, you know, uh, it's fantastic. You have this translation. Um, yeah, okay. 
va bene. Um, and uh, because at that, at that time I didn't have the time to, to, to um, apply for a grant for, for the national agency to pay my trip and my hotel. And I had a good feeling. So I took money from my pocket and I went there. But I did a little squat just to know who they are and all that stuff. So when I really knew that I was in the right place when I was there, because I, I spoke to the people, I saw the facilities, and I saw how they work, and I also did my sort of synergia. And obviously, this was very high. And this, even higher. So you have to think about that. So when, when you start your project and you have an idea to work with an Austrian uh, partner, you want to work with a Turkish partner, blah, 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 you ask them, oh, uh, could you self-assess your SWOT for me? And then you, ha you, you do yours, OK? I'm insisting in this partnership structure because 50% uh, of the projects I know, oh, fortunately, I'm a very small guy and I know very little project, but 50% of the project, you know, it's just a bunch of guys that, OK, you, 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 let's go. No, you have to spend some time, if you have time. <coughs> the budget. Ooh. I just remember, I, I decided to spend a day on this because it's so important. Um, the execution methodology. Then you have all the things such as the quality plan. Uh, sorry, really, for the this is small characters. Huh? This is a worst slide. You have the monitoring uh, procedures, indicators. I've been talking about uh, that in the introduction. You have the auditing, OK? Uh, auditing, everybody knows about auditing. Auditing means uh, looking very deep on, on the, what's going on, on the numbers, on what's going, wh how you, what you're spending, if you're spending and you're putting the, sp the, 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 the numbers in the right things, auditing, OK? Then you have the exploitation and transfer, transferability. Uh, these are the big picture of this uh, step. I'll skip sustainability for later because of the, the time we have. But I will go back to sustain sustainability uh, in, a, in a moment. On the executing and implementing. So, buongiorno. I'm moving a lot, huh? <laughs> so, may, may I go too? Only you, it got me. I want to go too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure, sure, be, yeah, please, yeah. Do, do you want do you want me to wait yeah or okay all right um, on the um, third stage yeah oh <laughs> I forgot 
That's the second day, right? Uh, in Salada Verde. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, in this part, you have the work plan. Work plan is about assigning tasks, giving tasks to people, monitoring these tasks, monitoring the alignment, okay? You everybody see that? Yes? No. Okay, tasks time. Okay, you say that uh, that's the that's that's what you plan. So the alignment is you want obviously to, to be as close as possible to this line, right? <laughs> you don't want to be too fast. You're going to lose some things here. Huh? And you don't want also to take a long time and do a little work. So the alignment is you have to be sure that you're following your path. Alignment is an interesting word to use. Huh? The project chart, that is the picture, you will see a project chart later on, the work, the work packages, how it works, the connections. The tools you, you can use to do all this job. And then, again, the partner alignment, okay? You want to know exactly if the partner are doing what they are planned they are uh, assigned to do. Huh? And imagine, uh, be sure, be definitely sure that there is something that would, you, will, you have forgotten in the planning phase. You will, believe me. Even the guys from the NASA forget something. But they forget uh, uh, they, they don't forget things enough for the big plan to fail. They forget little things. And most of all, at all stages, all little stages of the plan, they have a change plan. It's what everybody knows as the plan B. Okay, I have the plan A. If something goes wrong, I have a plan B, a parachute. Okay. Staff management is important, obviously, at this, at this part. And you will see that in the projects, 50% of the budgets, most of the time, are linked to the staff management. And obviously, the management team, if you have a good leader, a good manager, this is important too, okay? It's like a team. If you have a very good team, a bad manager, you might have some troubles, and vice versa. Any questions? Don't worry, it's a bit supersonic. Actually, I'm already 20 minutes late. And all this is, will be available in, um, in a, well, in a platform somehow. I've already been talking about that with uh, Pia and Arcangelo. So, uh, next session, we'll see a bit more about Let's say, uh, it's not here yet, some, some methods. I switch uh, some, some stages, but I'll come back to these stages while we are working, okay? Maybe it would be uh, more interesting also because you will view what you're doing with the link to the concept and the idea of what, what you're doing, okay? Um, not yet. Okay, we'll see about that. Um, more specifically, some key uh, approaches, how you do things, and uh, some, some um, method and, and 
and kind of uh, activity that you can use from this method. We are going to spend a bit of time on the logical framework because of the reason I told you. It's a big time European trend. You have a um, very interesting document that I upload on the platform that was made by the Serbian agency on the logical framework approach that I uh, really, if you are, you might have different uh, ideas what to do in this field in the future, but if you want to work in the, um, if you want to be an engineer in uh, manage, project management, you want to, to know this method very well, okay? As a, global project manager coordinator I don't spend m m a lot of time using this method but I know how it works so when I'm working with my two colleagues just for you to know just to manage projects I have two people by projects you the importance of the management okay and when they talk to me I understand what they say and if they say Bruno we can't do that believe me I, I trust them this is very important. If you don't know the alphabet, at least it's difficult to, to, you know, to follow. So I think it's interesting for you to know this method. And also we'll see some key points, actually my key points in project management. You will have, you, you have opportunity, as I said, one hour is really short, but I'm trying to give you my experience on where things fail in projects. Okay, you know Saramago? Mr. Saramago? He said something like, you can imagine how a minute of stupidity can harm all a career. You know uh, Romney? 47% of Americans are not uh, over. Romney, he lost because of this gases a bit you know it's difficult to trust a guy no politics okay but it, it's interesting to analyze what's going on in the life with a PCM approach ah. okay uh, not yet well um, I, I, I pointed out, obviously, I'm sorry, you can't read anything from there, right? It's difficult. But I tried to, to, to put here some kind of, uh, the, this is the more complex towards the more simple way of managing a project or methods. There is a method called PMI, it's from back from 69 and it was very used in, eight, in the 80s. This PMI method is really to, if you want to build a plane, to build a, a building, a train, if you want to build a complex machine, you will use a very complex structure of project management. PMI. Prints, this was from England in the 90s. Actually, this, this method was developed to, for, for ITs, um, Information and Telecommunication Systems from England. It's called PRINTS. Now you, you have the PRINTS 2. It's interesting to read about. There's a very good book. Uh, also, in the platform, uh, I put some books that I think it would be interesting to, for you to know. Books about a lot of things. But, you know, injured. The step-by-step -step one, two, three method. This is more and more simple, step by step. You do one thing, only after that you do the second thing. It's kind of a, also called the critical path. You can't go on, you want to cook. You need the ingredients, uh, you need a cook, you need the, the, the tools, okay, you need a kitchen. If you don't have a kitchen, you can start, it's impossible. So first things first. It's simple. Then you have uh, the Agile system. The Agile system is even more simple. For example, you want to build a website. Well, you can start for, with the uh, home page first. I'll do your home page, the big picture. 
And then when you have time and when you feel okay to work with this uh, web page, you start building the other pages. This is agile method. You're not using agile in European project management. You would be more here, more or less here. Okay? I would say that the logical framework approach is around, around here. And, and actually the logical framework approach is itself is getting more and more complex according to the complexity of the project. If you want to build a solar farm in Africa using the logical framework approach, it's not the same than building a, a solar panels upon your house. You can use the same method, but the complexity is different. I prefer to go to Africa. Okay, what about the logical framework approach? Well, basically, it's, it's a kind of um, analytical tool. Analytical means detail tool to help you understand how the, projects, uh, the project work, how the project is going on, and what must happen for the project to go on, etc. This is not going to be uh, fast. It's going to be really, as I said, supersonic. But uh, I, I, I hope you will have a good idea what it is, uh, the way I'm presenting this. This is this. Now you know. OK. <clears throat> um, well, it's a bit. Uh, Okay, logical what? Logical framework. So framework is a big word to say organized, structured, okay? Um, and um, let's say that um, in a way it will answer this framework, the why, the, the what, the how, or the project, the, uh, the who, the where, the when, I mean, all, all these all this little boxes helps you uh, to understand the project. It's kind of uh, analytical, means a bit mathematical. It's a matrix system. But you will see that it's quite um, intuitive. I, I believe. So, obviously, you are here at the second stage of the project uh, itself, at the planning, at the programming, okay? You want to have a good idea of how your project is going to progress. Okay. Um, the inputs is basically where, where you, you will see the framework after that and you, I will um, um, uh, show an uh, animation and you will see. The inputs is, is the information you put on your framework in order to understand how it works. So it's, the inputs are the information. For example, you will see that in, in boxes you put the aim. That's, the aim is the final uh, result. It's the highest, is the success of the project. The, speci the specific objectives or the operational objectives, that are the practical things to go to and to reach to make uh, the project, to build the project. The uh, results themselves, because along the project you will have different results. Okay? And also all the activities that are linked to the project. So it, it, you can call that also, um, in a way,
you can call that, I'm going to need some paper, <laughs> a break down, a breakdown structure, okay, you, 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 you cutting your, your, your project in small parts in order to have a clear view. But when you, you cut your project in small parts, you don't want the parts to mix. You don't want them to be very organized. Okay? The assumptions are basically things that are not part of the project. They are outside the project, but they may influence the project. I want to go ski. That's my project. One assumption is, it, is there snow? If, if there's no snow yet, I can't ski. I have to wait. My, my, my activity can't start without snow. OK? Assumption. Assumption is uh, something to be there, to be true, for me to start, or for me to do things. And the precondition, actually, there's no S here. The precondition is the first thing that you need to have to start the whole thing, the whole project. Um, are you OK with this, more or less, this, this definition? OK. It's going to be a bit, um, the first time I remember I had uh, this approach, it was a bit confusing, but don't hesitate to stop me if you don't. Hello. This is uh, the um, framework. OK, so here in this colon, you will put the inputs that are the aim, the specific objectives, the outcomes, the activities. In this one, you will put at, at, at specific boxes the indicators that you're going to use to check that you're doing what you've been planning. And here, you will put the source of this verification. OK? Uh, if you put, for example, uh, an indicator that is <clears throat> the, the money you spent. You had uh, 10 euros, and now you have, uh, for example, 5 euros. Who are, go are you going to, to ask to? Your accountant, that's the source, for example, OK? And you see that there are different colors because there are different indicators, or, may, or better, there are specific indicators for the aims and specific indicators for the objectives and etc. And if you have specific indicators for the aim, then you have a specific source. Maybe the source is the same at different levels. But at least it might be possible that at some levels, the sources are different. Or you have here one source that is the same in all three boxes, but here there is two more sources possible and etc. I will use a very funny example after that and very simple try to for you to understand. Uh, so this part here as I said, are the assumptions that you can't control. You cannot control strike. You're in the middle of your project, and your staff is not happy for, with you. They strike. They stop working. It doesn't depend on you. But a bit, a bit. So these are external things that have nothing to do with the project itself but might influence the project. OK, let's start. <clears throat> this vertical logic is basically the fact that 
the activities are going to produce the outcomes, the results. The results are going to fulfill, to achieve the objectives that you've planned. And obviously, if you have the activities realized, if you have the results realized, it's there. And if you have achieved your objectives, well, there's a good chance that you achieve your aim. So it's a bottom-up logic, vertical logic. And it's sometimes confusing because obviously you start with the aim. And you start with the aim. But the vertical logic, the, the reason how the framework will help you to manage your project is because you can't have the aim before the activities. Right? Okay? All right. Okay, so you write in the box the A. Okay, I want to do this. After that, the objectives, the specific objectives that are connected to the aim. And after that, the results that you expect to have in your hands that will be part of this project. And you will also put the, there the activities, the work plan, the work packages, the, all the things you have to do for the results to come up. So first step, second step, these are the meaning of the numbers. You start there. And the vertical logic of the framework uh, approach is the contrary. You start here to get there. OK? At this point, when you know all the activities that you are going to need to do to build your project, you will set the means. What are the means? Well, the means are equipment, staff, uh, subcontracting, I'm using this word on purpose because these are part of the budget table. Okay? You will have to subcontract, for example, uh, translation in uh, Austrian. I don't speak German. You have to, you have to, uh, you have, I have to buy a new computer because I was, they stole my computer at the Lisbon airport. Um, you will need to travel. And when you need to travel, you will need to Subsistences, okay? All that are means. After that, well, these means are linked to costs. You following the project now, okay? This is the building of the project. So this is the building of the framework. Oh, by the way, this, this specific box is called the matrix. Um, at that point, you have an idea then of what you're going to do, what you will need to do it, and how it costs. And now you start putting the assumptions, meaning the things that may influence your activities. The strike, for example, of uh, your staff, strike means they stop working. Uh, will influence your activity. How can you work if you don't have people working uh, for you? So it's an assumption. Um, I remember when I was in, uh, <clears throat> when I was in um, Verona in, in, in February, Italy, there was this, some part of Italy were under snow, big time snow, never for a long time. So your people can't go to work. This is an assumption, weather. Nothing to do with the project, but it might influence your project. You remember the... I'm using so strange images, I'm sorry about that. You remember the volcano from Iceland? Our president, in, uh, the president of uh, the, the, the Portugal had to come back by train or by car because he couldn't fly. The, the planes were not allowed to fly because of the dust. This is an assumption. So you will put here the assumptions 
linked to the activities. Are you okay with that? Here, obviously, you will put the assumptions linked to the outcomes. And here, the assumption links for you to follow better, I put the uh, AOS, okay? Assumption linked to activities, assumption linked to outcomes, assumptions linked to specific objectives. Obviously, you don't have assumptions at the level of the aim, because when you are at level one, you're there. It's the arrival, you're the winner. So whatever happens, you're there anyway, so, okay? No assumption at this level. Okay. When you have this framework, it means that you have written in your boxes, it's actually, you, you have a, you, you design your table and you write inside the table, okay? You understand? You start then filling in the indicators. Can someone tell me the time, please? Half past 11? Oh, very precise. <laughs> okay, um, so we have uh, half an hour until uh, 12. Now you, you're going to fill in the boxes, the indicators. Indicators to understand that you achieved your aim. Indicators that you uh, source of these indicators. For example, how can you how can you say you achieve your aim? Imagine that your aim was to be able to talk to five people today about European project. Well, you are the source because you check on your checklist. Oh, I talked to him. I talked to her. I talked to her. Oh, I talked to her too. You have a source. You are the source. If you are Imagine that your aim was to uh, build a, a, a training course about Italian language. What are the source of information and what are the indicators? For example, you have one very good indicator that is during one week you used your method to teach Italian. So you have, for example, a list of uh, signatures of presence things like that. You have the handbooks, you have the videos, you have things. Uh, and the source that I said is obvious. The specific objective is the same process. Indicator, source, indicator, source. Imagine that um, one of the results are a translation of your Italian manual in uh, Norwegian. Well, one indicator is the book itself. One indicator is the fact that people are using in no way your, your method, your book. So the source is linked to the indicator, okay? At this point, you have your framework done, okay? So, if we want to... Um, go back to the framework. Is there any, let's say, any uh, situation that you don't understand at this point? Sorry, Antonio. Objectively, verifiable indicator. I don't like this, but you have to know this. You have, you have also this key performance indicator. Basically, it's indicator that you can really check. And indicators that are reliable. Okay? Okay, now we are going to start the demo, how it works. So I'm going to be really piano piano. It's not because you are dumb, it's because, okay, sorry. About that. There, you have what, it, what we, we call precondition. That's the first thing that have to be 
Can you see this? I like the sun, but can you see here? I didn't plan that. This is outside my project. OK. The precondition here. So you, you see, the engineers that built this building didn't plan to have some system to shut down the, 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 the sun. So you are. OK. The precondition here. Let's say that the, the condition for you to start the project is true. It's OK. There is no, I can ski. It's OK. So I can start. So if I can start, it means that I do the activities. Remember the vertical logic, OK? Bottom up. So prediction, preconditions are OK. Activities can start. Now, if activities are done, OK, I did it. It's done. And if what I assumed, I, I, the assumption that I wrote there is true, then it's all green light. OK? I want to ski. There is snow. I can start. An assumption. The, the highest um, part of the mountain I'm going to is open. OK? So I can ski, OK, because there is snow. I start. But one of the um, results, or one, one of the things, specific things, that I wanted to do, OK, activity is a ski. Precondition is snow. Snow, ski. But one of the results that I planned is to go to the highest part of the mountain. And my assumption is it's open. So if there is snow, and if I ski, then there is a good chance that I mean, if uh, there is snow, I ski, and if the, the higher part, part is open, there is a good chance that I reach my, object, my, my, outcome, my outcome, one of my outcomes, to go to the highest part. So it's, you will see that it's all, all, always, if and if, then, yes. OK? Now it's not bottom up, it's zigzag up. OK? Uh, sorry. If precondition, I can start. If I did it, and if assumption of the activity is OK, then I have the outcome. Same thing. If I reach my outcome, and if the assumption that I link to the outcome is true, there's a good chance that I reach my specific objectives. All right? If I reach my specific objectives, and if the assumption that I linked to these specific objectives are true, then there is a good chance that I managed to reach my aim. OK, that's the logical framework approach. Supersonic approach this morning. OK? You know this guy already. <laughs> I want to find a job in Italy. It's not a very good deal. <laughs> uh, I want to find a job in Italy in European projects linked. That's very specific, right? 
I want to manage this job with the Skype interview. <clears throat> and to be able to manage to book a Skype interview, I'm going to network. I'm going to send uh, my curriculum, my resume, I'm going to phone call people, I'm going to find friends who know friends, who know the friends, etc. Networking. Networking is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Okay? I even uh, proposed a work package only on networking in different projects. Okay. Um, this uh, networking I want to do with uh, the minimum cost by LinkedIn, by Skyping, by emailing. And <clears throat> I just want to spend about 100 euros because I want to be very cost effective. Can you imagine 100 euro a job in Italy? Jesus, this is big time impact. Okay, impossible some years ago, huh? And then, well, um, assumption, no trip to Italy. Okay, to network, I, I, I assume that uh, I, don't want, I don't need to go to Italy. Nobody will tell me, hey, you go first, you come first to see me and we talk face to face. This is my assumption. It doesn't depend on me. It depends on the, the guy I'm going to network with. Okay. I assume that my three years only experience in your project is enough to be candidate for the job. This is an assumption that doesn't depend on me. The one who decides how many years you need to be uh, recruited is the guy who is going to employ you. This is, uh, by the way, assumption. You can link assumption also with risk management. Okay, it's risky. Maybe here I'm too in ambitious. I assume that the job that I will, the proposal that I will find, will be uh, uh, on a position of project manager. It doesn't depend on me. Maybe the employer or the company looks for someone uh, working in another field of European project, okay? Such as, for example, uh, legal aspects. Maybe they're looking for a lawyer. This is an example. You can have so many assumptions. Okay, well, how can I be sure that I, find I did my job, a contract? Uh, the employer, it's intuitive and obvious, right? Uh, well, when I receive the job proposal, I can, I can see that, well, it's about a European project. So the job proposal can be a document sent by email, whatever. Also, the, the source can be the, the employer. But at this stage, for example, it could be... Um, um, how you call that in English? Uh, you know, these agencies that find jobs for you. Intermediate agencies. Can be that. I don't know the employer yet at this stage, but the agency sent me the proposal. <clears throat> well, the Skype interview, it's obvious, so <laughs> I was there. Okay? I, I did the Skype interview, so I know I did it. I didn't dream it. Okay, I tried to make it simple. So here we go in this journey. Precondition. There is a need. There is uh, Italian companies that I know. I see. Uh, I saw some information somewhere, and I know that there are there are some companies in 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 Italy that are looking for PMP. Sorry, uh, professional uh, project manager professionals. Actually, it's linked with a certificate from an uh, association in uh, the States. 
called ASTD, very strong agency. So there is a need of PMPs in, in Italy. So I can look for a job because there is a need. It's the precondition. Okay, everybody? So if there is the need, I can start networking. It, it's worth it. I can start spending the, the money and, and trying to look at the, the contacts. If I did my network, and while networking, I understand that the, all the contacts that I have told me, oh, you don't need to come. It's OK. We can have a Skype conference. So if and if, if I did my, my, my job well, and if, in fact, I didn't need to, to, to travel, well, I can have my Skype conferences. If I did my Skype conference, several Skype conferences, and if during this, uh, sorry, I'm fast, and if during these conversations I understand at least for some, some, some of the, the employers, possible employers, that I, my three years experience in, in European project is enough, it's cool, well then then I reach my objectives to find a proposal focused on the specific objective of the job I want to do, right? If I manage to find a proposal exactly in what I want to work on, and if the position that I will have in a company is a project manager position, then there's a good chance I find a job. It's easy in the slides, huh? But uh, believe me, it's a very useful method when, when you um, when you have uh, some complexity on the project, okay? <clears throat> All right. Now, um, let's see if I have a slide for that. No. So some, some, some key points of uh, project cycle management I would like to, to um, tell you now in, in a simple way is the, the communication part, for example. Two parts that I think are very important. The communication system and the tracking document system. I already uh, spoke a bit about it. But, um, can, sorry, can you tell me the time now? Because I think uh, we want a break in a moment. Oh, Marco is mad at me, you are mad at me, everybody's... Uh, okay, we have 10 minutes coffee break uh, in a moment. When you communicate, you have to think you, you're not with the people. They are far. And you talking about this. You have this in your hand. Or, yeah. Yeah, this in your hand. You, you can see that it's very well structured. Well, I'm not talking about me now. I'm just talking about the, okay? You know, 211A, 211D. This is not uh, because I'm a kind of a NASA engineer. It's because everything I do, I do in a way that I will be able to talk to Synergia or to whatever I have to talk to in a very efficient way. Hey, do you think that uh, the point 211 is well written? 
You don't lose any time in understanding what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, you see uh, in the second page, oh, there's no paginations. Okay, everything you do, you have to think that at some point you will have to communicate with someone who is not here. And you know that even if they are here, sometimes we don't understand each other. So can imagine when we are far from each other. Okay, so by, by communication, um, I'm talking about the clear topic, a clear understanding of the content. What are we talking about? Um, uh, the right tool for the right communication. Uh, I don't spend many times with emails. I call. My colleagues, the people who work with me, I call them every 10 minutes if I have to. Well, if I call them every 10 minutes, it's because we are not organized. But if I have a sub subject to, to discuss with, I call. I am in my office. Uh, the office of uh, Pedro is uh, 20 meters. I call him. I don't need to go there because it's just an information. Then it's a bit complex. And we need to discuss a bit more about the, the information. Let's have a meeting. You don't need to meet un unless you need to meet. Meetings is, is... But at some point you need to meet because the communication needs to. Um, the, the, the situation is a bit complex. And, and, and the, 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 the guy you want to talk to is in, uh, I'm in Portugal and he's in Italy. We go Skype. Before that, people email. I don't email, I Skype, but Skype people have to be there. So maybe you can use an email. Emails. Did you receive these emails with, uh, I don't know, two pages? One email, one topic, 10 sentences. Even better, one sentences. sentence. Send me the handbook number three. Come back. Handbook number three, same topic, is not ready. Okay, not ready. Send me handbook number three, and by the way, the pictures of the event, and also I would like to have... Oof. Okay? One topic, one email. That's a suggestion. You do whatever you want. But, um, a protocol. Maybe you want to uh, design in your project a way of doing things about the communication. A protocol, a little thing, very simple thing. And even better, clear options of answers. Yes or not. For example, so you don't lose time. Okay? Second point, the documentation. Quickly. I actually spoke about that earlier, you know? You start with a document, with a file name, you send it to your partner, it comes back. This part is important. So I will, I will show you in the, in the, 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 the next uh, sessions how I work so you can have an idea. So remember that. Communication and documentation tracking system. I even use uh, Microsoft Access to, to track my documentation. It's a very powerful and useful tool because it's a database. Okay? We all need a coffee now. Thank you very much. Uh, the questions and all that stuff, when, whenever you want, uh, the next stage, you can, okay? Uh, after the break, we are going to start working. So I get rid of this, Marco and Antonio. You have to put it back because then we're going to work and to on the application form, okay? Now, basically, uh, here in this session, we are going to start looking at practically the how-to, okay? Well, first, uh, let's have an idea of the objectives. Understand the online application form. And more specifically, where to find 
the information. Uh, understand the meaning of each uh, section uh, in a wall uh, view. Sorry, Dominic. Uh, in a wall view of the docu documents, and and having this big picture, then on the next session we go closer and closer. And when we go closer to the the parts, we actually will work with them. Learning the basic rules for filling the forms, the uh, minimum characters, uh, you can't do one thing before doing the uh, first thing and all that stuff. And learn the procedures for applying online. Be careful, this I'm going to show you today and this week is about Grundvig multilateral projects. So you have 10, 10 actions. Uh, in, you remember the transversal? Uh, programs, uh, uh, Comenius, Erasmus, etc. In Grundvig, you have 10 actions. So, not all 10 actions obey to the same rules. But the multilateral projects, 95% or even 100% are the same. Okay, the website. This is the website where you have two websites for Grundvig and for this field. You have the agency, this EACA, uh, Executive Agency for Culture and Audiovisual, is the operational arm of the program. There is another website that is, that is the Directorate General, D, G. Which is a website where you can find a lot of information about all the things that are related to education within the European Commission. I didn't uh, tell uh, you about uh, how, it, how Europe is built because I didn't have time, but just for you to know, the European Commission is the operational arm of the European Union. The European Union is constituted by seven city, right? institutions. Some of them are political, some of them are not political. My eye, it's all political. Oh, institution of European uh, Union, the European Commission, Commission, the European Parliament, the Council, the Court of Justice, the Bank, the, the Central Bank, are institution of the European Commission, uh, Union. So this agency is the one who is responsible for all the operational part of these applications. These are the guys you have to comply, to obey, and to follow to about your application, okay? So, by the way, you think about having some connection there. Um, so we will see that there is a link for the lifelong learning program, a link for the funding opportunities, a link for all core documentation, a link for the selection and status application form available, a link that is basically this long thing. This will be available on the platform, so in order for you to follow these steps, let's do it together, all right? <clears throat> so this site is the site EACEA.Europe.EU of the European Agency. Uh, it's very simple, and you Google it, you will have the information. But you Google EACEA, and you will see the first thing that uh, show up will be that. Then, if you go down a bit on the page, you have here the lifelong learning program on this page. You have also on this page 
Erasmus Mundus program, which is another one, Tempus, blah, blah, blah. We are concerned by the lifelong learning program. Click. In this page, we have the sectorial, you remember? Sectorial. So you can click on these sectorial programs to look for specific information on, about the, these programs. You have here the transversal. And this GM here is Jean Monnet, you remember? We are concerned at this point about the fundings, funding opportunities. This is the link you will click to, click on to get to the information you need to apply. So we are in 2012, but you are applying for project for next year. Just for you to know quickly, you will apply in this Grundvig uh, multilateral, multilateral project on the 31st of January. That's the deadline. Actually, you will apply before that because you organize. You will apply by the end of December. That's a good apply application. Or maybe you have January to think about maybe improving something or checking, cross-checking. 30% uh, of my time, I work on planning. 30% of my time on writing and 30% of my time on cross-checking. Okay? Uh, so you click on the 2013 and you have this... It's not very easy to, to see, but all this tape Something maybe I should uh, say about that. Mm. Okay, when you are at the Funding Opportunities web page 2013, you have these two tabs. Interesting. Check it out. Check the first. It's, it's writ written, Subprograms, Comenius, Erasmus, Grunvig, Leonardo da Vinci Multilateral Project. Networks accompanying measures. And in the second part, KA1, KA2, and here, multilateral project. Hmm. Okay, you will tell me Leonardo da Vinci multilateral. So, somehow, but you have Grundvig here and multilateral here. Which one you, you, you choose? It's a test. <laughs> well, actually, it's, I believe it's a bit confused. But since, and at that point, you don't know yet normally the guides, part one, part two A, part two B. But well, I'm telling you now, the deadline for multilateral projects, Grundvig multilateral project is 31st of January. So this helps you to decide which to choose. Either this one or this one. So when you look at the table, sometimes it's a bit confused. Well, anyway, so you click. Uh, I don't know if there is a link here about one thing I would like to talk to you before that. Oh, okay. Application form for the, both of them. So. When you select uh, at the website of funding opportunities on application forms available, okay, you will have to do it yourself to remember all the stuff, but when you click that, you, you arrive, you, you, you have this um, big page where everything is there. It's not very easy to, to see, but it's a kind of um, complex page. You have this, this thing here. If you're not very uh, careful enough, you see a very important here, link here. It's written very little. All core documentation about the call. We will see that. 
So at this, at this uh, stage, again, these two tables, Grundvig, OK, there you can say that it's quite obvious if you spend some time that Leonardo da Vinci is directly linked to the word multilateral project. But even though I think it should be a bit more clear for people who do that the first time. So you have here uh, Grundvig, a separation, Leonardo da Vinci multilateral project. And here you have multilateral projects. Again. And in this row, you have 31st of January. And in this row, you have 28th of February. Well, since you know that is our case is 31st of January, actually it's the first one. I send, um, I'm, 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 I've been asking to other partners what they think about that, but I've, I don't have any, um, any um, information yet. So before going to, to the, this link, let me stop you here. Actually, there is a security, because when you go to, uh, if you, you don't see this link, and you go straight to this one, when, when you go to this one, well, you will find anyway, this, it's repeated, so it's OK. And I think that's the reason. They repeat it there, because they forgot to put this very clear here. Anyway, before going there, I would like to go there, because you will have a clear idea of what they call the core documents for the application form. So here you're so happy, because they obviously want a lot of application, and it's in different languages. And obviously, there is Italian language. Um, and you are able, at this page, to, to um, take all the documentation you need in order to understand the rules, everything you need to know about the application. There are the core documents. And these core documents are, are um, very um, organized. First of all, you have what they call the call for proposals. OK? It's not uh, worth it opening it right now because it's going to be too small. But the first structure of, of the application is the, OK, they're calling you to apply. And this, in this document, there are some, some specific information you have to know about to be able to understand what it's all about, what, what this call is about, what kind of project they expect you to, um, to send to them. It's one thing. The other thing is the strategic priorities. I don't know if you remember, but the strateg tra strategic priorities I mentioned a bit uh, earlier because I wanted you to already know what we were talking about. I used the application, the uh, guideline part 2B, that is the details of the actions. And in this, uh, in this uh, action, it was written uh, two priorities, aging population and learning pathway. You will see that in the strategic priorities for Grundvig, is it me? No. Um, you will see that it's explained. Because remember, in this Grundvig, uh, in, in the LLP Grundvig, you have the all time duration project priorities from 2007 to 2013. These are applicable every year. The same. And each year, there are strategic priorities because obviously a lot of things have been done before. So they don't want you to repeat things. Well, you allowed to repeat something, for example, of a strate strategic uh, call of 2009, if your project is really valuable, because what you want to do uh, next year have not been done. It's possible. You're allowed to. But, well, you have to be innovative. You, have to, you, have to, you will have to explain. 
And also, it's dangerous not to use the strategic uh, um, priorities of the year, uh, the current year, because, well, it's have to be, your project will have to be so wonderful, so, okay? I recommend, if you have a project idea, result, topic, whatever, that is not matching the strategic priority of the current year, well, try to make it. Try in a way to, uh, to, to link it, okay? Either it's an event, for example. I have an idea that have uh, to, to do, have nothing to do with aging people, aging uh, population. But I can uh, organize an event well, I, I will invite uh, people of a st certain ages to stimulate somehow their interest in my project idea. Oh, it's a link. It's thin, but okay. But I recommend to use the strategic priorities. What I'm saying right now is not bulletproof. It's a suggestion. Um, in this core document links, we also have a second part. There is. Uh, what I told you about the, the guides. The guides is a set of uh, three PDF documents in your language where the first part is a bit global. We will see that. It's a bit global. It talked about all the critical rules, the financial aspects, uh, the eligible costs, all the, all the things that are related to all the programs and all the actions. More or less. The second part, part 2B, uh, address a bit more about the program itself. What is Leonardo Erasmus, what is Comenius, what is Leonardo, what is Grunvig? A bit more specific. And the third part here, you already know, it's the um, action by action for each program. Okay. Um, well, after that, you have a, a link, for example, to uh, the, your national agencies and your executive agency. You know now that uh, for the Grunvig multilateral project, the national, uh, your the agency you're working with is centralized. It's the EACEA. Okay. Let's go back to. This page. So remember, at, at this step, we, we had clicked here to see the, the core document. So we go back to this page. Here, we click on the application form available for the deadline 31st of January next year. Oh, by the way, here is an important information. Um, we will talk about that also. This application uh, method in this Grunvig multilateral project is an online application. So the deadline for this online application is 12 CET, means Central European time, means your time. You're lucky. I'm one hour behind, so I have to be careful. But since you're very well organized, you will apply by the end of December, if possible. It doesn't mean if you apply the 31st in the morning at 11.13, it's not all right, believe me. It happens a lot. But OK, so you click in this, uh, in this link, and you will get to the big time page. That is where you find the, what they call the e-form, the electronic uh, form of all the applications, all the um, uh, actions, programs that you're applying to. And you scroll, you, you look at your program, okay? And here you see LLP application application, LLP call for proposal 2013, multilateral project. 
This is your page. This is where you will choose. Okay, so here also I think they should improve this, this part because when you are at this level you can see what is the meaning of things. So, well, anyway, I'm very uh, sorry, perfectionist. But. So, uh, in this column, well, in this column you, you, you uh, well, let's start here. This is an information for them, for just for you to know that they're, they're, this, they, they, they codes. This is the version, so you can verify eventually in all the document that you're using the right version. If you fail to use the right version, you're doomed. You, whatever you've been doing is for nothing, more or less. You uh, have the date where this version was released. Sorry, Antonio. <clears throat> and sorry, uh, you too. You have here the, the e-forms uh, that you will use to, to apply, the user guides, and if available, some FAQ. I think the FAQ for this year are, are not available yet, at least not last week. So I, I put for you the FAQ for 2011. And uh, here you have the postal address because sometimes in some application you need to print your application and to send it to the agency. Okay, so remember the e form. We go back to the 3 3. So here, according to your there's a trick here, according to the way you're, you're using Windows uh, 7 or XP and all that stuff. In my case, for example, either I, I can just download, download it, sorry, or sometimes, be careful because sometimes you have to... I have problem with Italian and even more when I can't see what I'm reading. But some, uh, sometimes in your system you have to save the application form in your computer by save link as. This is Adobe Acrobat techniques. Sometimes you get mad because oh, I can't, I can't. Oh, save link as. Salva link con nome. Va bene. Okay. So you save this link, and obviously you save this user guide. This user guide is another document that the uh, EACEA um, um, make available to you to help you. There's so many helps from the EACEA. You will see that you have, and this is new this year, you have an info kit on financial aspects that is uh, available now on the page. You have the user guides, part one, part two, A, part two, B. You have this user guide. You have the user guide for applicants. You have many guides. So you download these two, um, these two things, and you get what? When you, um, let me see if this is there. I don't remember if it's there already or not. Okay. So when you download your document, Once, once you uh, um, uh, downloaded your application form, which is the, the, the main document that will be used to apply, that's the e-form where you are going to attach some documents. You will see that later. Uh, it's done. You go back to this page where where uh, you have what you call the call, okay? Just for you to understand, this is the main page of the call. This is where you stop and you start from there to pick things. You start from there to pick the e-form. 
you stay there to pick the other documents that you need to fill in to apply. I think this is confusing, but this is the way it is. So when you get back to this page, you already have your e-form, you need the other documents to apply. They call it the application package. Okay. So you have the, in this page you have these informations, uh, information about things. We will see that later. Uh, this is a very important page. And by the way, you see this little thing? No, you don't see it very well. But here, in this information updates, be very careful because sometimes you have a document, a document uh, which is uh, uh, the, the last version of something. One thing is for sure, the e-form and the application package will not change because at some point when they, I think uh, the, the dates uh, this year that they make, made available the application forms documents was in 28th of October or was it September. At that point it's not going to change anymore because they can't provide the information for the application very close to the date. I mean, you need time. So, be careful about this link, this uh, part of the uh, information uh, updates. So, you go, uh, you scroll, you innovations, for example, Serbia and new countries that are allowed to, um, to apply. Official documentation means legal documentation. You know, the 2720, these kind of things. You have here, again, the application forms and annex and annexes. So here, this is very important. And actually, I use uh, this is um, something that all uh, European project managers do. The instruction of for applicants is another guide. Besides the user guide of the e form, besides the guides part one, part two B, part two A, part two B, beside all that, you also have this instruction for applicants. Crucial, very important. Okay? When when even now that I have some experience on applying on a project, I work with these three documents opened and I cross check. And I spend time on cross checking, okay? If I'm, I'm, for example, at uh, the part of uh, the equipment costs, I'll check in all documents about equipment costs. Okay? So this, you will see after, I'll, I'll, show, uh, I'll, I'll show again. Yeah? You have the evaluation committee guidelines. Aha! This is new this year. You know, what I'm going to say, was for me at some point, sometime, a bit intuitive. And uh, on the 12th of November, there was this info day, uh, online streaming uh, conference. Oops, I need to do. Sorry, I forgot to take some things for my back. I had a very bad accident uh, surfing and from, from time to time when the weather change I have some, some... okay so this um, evaluation committee guideline is very interesting because it gives you uh, an idea of how the evaluator check your application okay just a moment It tells you, it tells you where they will stop and check, where they will stop and double check, where they will stop and triple check, etc. Also, in the Part Two B guideline, you will see that. Uh, well, let 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 me show you that right away, so you have a concrete idea. <clears throat> Pfft, 
<laughs> Good luck. Uh, can you see? In this document, and at the part, at the, the part of the Grundvig multilateral project action, you have this award criteria thing. This is very important because when your, your project is uh, analyzed, it will be analyzed according to these criteria. Is it relevant? Is the work program um, a very good one? Does it have an innov innovative characters? What about the quality of the consortium? European added value, cost-benefit ratio, impact, quality of the valorization plan. The valorization plan is the plan you have in mind to, for your pro project to be useful. Okay? Uh, and the participation of the third country when it's... Uh, you will understand what it is. The third country is basically a country that is eligible to be a part of the project but is not part of the European Union uh, 27. Or 27 plus countries allowed to eligible. Okay? So, coming back to the, um, uh, to the page, to the evaluation uh, committee guidelines, it helps you a lot to understand what is going to happen with your project. So you concentrate also on these points, okay? It's a good help. So for me, this evaluation committee guideline is a very important help to build your project also. Not the project itself, because obviously you're building a project not for the European Union, because you're building the project because of a need, because of something you identify, okay? But at some point, you have to comply with the rules, and it's a good help. So let's go to the application package. The application package have more or less four uh, documentation, more or less because sometimes they ask you uh, something else. The first one here is a Word document, which is the document that you will use to put the information of the project according to the structure of the uh, European Commission application. The second document is an Excel form which uh, is the part where you're going to put the numbers, the budget. The other document is a declaration of honor by the legal representative of the application uh, organization, meaning you state on your honor that what you're telling to them is true. Okay? And this is, uh, <laughs> be careful, this is uh, legal. It means that if you're uh, uh, lying, you can be prosecuted. Okay. And finally, the legal entity form. This uh, this form uh, tells about your the applicant organization. Okay, the legal statu status, the the capital, uh, a lot of information, the VAT numbers, this kind of thing. This is a proof of the existence of the applicant. Applicant. Okay. Well, then after that, you have um, a bunch of information that is very important to read and to, to know about, which is uh, things that we are going to address during the, um, the, uh, the other modules and sessions. Here, let's stop up this FAQ. Do you see, FAQ will be published here. So the, it's not there yet. But uh, I don't know how, how long it will take, but you already have available, if you want, the 2001. If you do, you Google FAQ, LLP, you will find the two, uh, 2011 version. And then you have the help desk, which is the, the places where you go to check, um, to, to, to know the contacts, the email that you can send to ask for information. So this, this page is crucial, okay? So that's how you get the information. Okay.
Well, so um, steps. You go online, check the documents, download them. Filling everything, everything is ready, foolproof, and uh, it's the moment to apply. You go online, you have your uh, e-form online, and you start attaching documents. Uh, the Word document, the MS Excel document, the legal entity form, and the declaration of owner. You will see in the e-form how it, it, I don't know if you're familiar with the Adobe uh, system, but you will see how it's uh, done. You're online. At some point in the e-form, you have, uh, each page have a validate button. So you click validate, validate, validate. And each time you validate, at each time you, you, you have message to help you uh, feel something, feeling something you forgot, things like that. At the last moment you validate and everything is okay, then you receive a message saying uh, you can submit now or submission possible, something. And at the last page of the e-form you have a button saying uh, submission. Okay, when you have the e-form not submitted, there is a, a number I will show you now. And when you submit, the e-form change, I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't change, but at the, the last page, information come up saying submission OK and submission number. And at the bottom of uh, the page, the, um, the information is submitted form. So you're sure that uh, your uh, e-form is submitted correctly. At this point, this is crucial that you do two things, my recommendation. First, you save this e-form. Blah, 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 uh, applied, or blah, 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 submitted, or blah, 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 okay, file name. And also, why not, I'm not very uh, fan of that because I like trees, but you print it. It's only on 11 page, pages, okay? So this is more or less the procedure. Um, we will see the overview after that. Let's have an idea of what, what we're talking about. 